All right, welcome everyone to the ESL Pro Series here. This will be New World Order Ellipse versus FXO Open. And I think it should be a rather interesting game as we do have the New World Order Ellipse, a fairly new, new team, new or gaming. fairly kind of... New, new World Gaming, they call it New World Gaming Eclipse. New World Gaming Eclipse, <laughs> same thing. Yeah, versus FX Open Esports. So, yep. uh, pretty good teams here, of course, uh, here, here in the ESL Pro Series. New World Gaming Eclipse, formerly Azir Gaming. Um, yep. So, yeah, I'm Chris Kidden, and uh, who was talking was Panda Nairil. I kind of interrupted him, but it's okay. But uh, we're going to be a cast for today as we get into this best of three series. So, Wright has a few bands coming out. He looks like Shen and Alice band out coming out from New World Gaming Eclipse. And then uh, Twist of Fate just waiting on this last band from FX Open. Yeah, I think we're going to see. A, I think we're going to see a Thresh band out here, but instead they're going to go with the Zed. Interesting decision. And what do you think about the decision not to ban Thresh throughout this yeah, entire that's, draft? Well, I mean that's going to be very dangerous. Of course, Zed just said, oh, oh, I mean, Thresh, but Thresh, there you go. Immediately picked up the Thresh is being a really good champion at catching people off, and he throws out the hooks. He has great CC. When someone's out of position, if someone's really good at Thresh, you can you can either make people out of position or you can get someone that's already out of position. So really nice champion to see coming out of here. Uh, just huge CC coming out of him. The uh, biggest thing about the, leaving him presence. or picking him up first is you don't show anything about what you're doing across the map. Yep. You don't know if they're going to – you don't know anything about their team, and you're going to have to show something other side. And right away they show the Jason Sejuani giving him a powerful jungler and basically someone who can do every other position as he is one of the most annoying champions in the game on Jace. Just has a bit of everything, and such a powerful champion because of the fact he does everything well, he does nothing poorly, and I hope to see a good game coming out from him. Yeah. So uh, these next two picks coming out of uh, FX Open, or these first two picks coming out of FX Open Esports, do you have that Jace and that Sejuani. Sejuani, of course, being so popular after uh, those recent patches coming in here. Jace being, you know, he was, he was like a month, Flavor of the month for a while, but now it's it's definitely very you have to be very careful with him. He still does has he still has that huge burst potential that can come out. Well, you have to be a little bit more careful when it comes to playing uh, Jace here. Looks like um, this S is going to be coming out here for the possible AD carry, and then Jarvan going to be picked up. So next to uh, picks for a new world gaming eclipse there. Definitely going to be nice to see a, a Jarvan combined with that Thresh. They both kind of have those AoEs coming out. Of course, those ultimates may not work together that well, but they also have that uh, that Ezreal, possibly blue build Ezreal, most likely blue build Ezreal, actually just having such strong counting potential. Yeah, that gives them the mid-game power they need, especially if they can pick a strong late-game mid laner and top laner, assuming this Jarvan isn't top, because we can never count that out. But they have a great opening start. And as you were saying about Sejuani, the biggest thing about her chain is where she can actually initiate well, and she has a bit more than just the little bit of damage. And it looks like we are going to be seeing the Sona likely to be picked up here, as she is one of the strongest supports at the moment, just due to the fact she has an AoE ultimate that combines up perfectly with a Sejuani ultimate, and it becomes a real terror in the laning f or in the entire game, and especially the team fight phase, if those two can get going. And it looks like we are going to see the Tristana locked in. Love the Tristana. What do you think about her? Oh, yeah. Tristana's just such a great late game AD carry, of course. Uh, just having the max range that she can have. Uh, it's going to be pretty interesting to see with Sun and both of them have pretty nice poke cover. It's something a lot more of a team fight. And uh, Tristana might just be wanting to uh, farm it up in the lane there. So it'll be interesting how that happens. Ooh, if this Ari comes out, that'll be very interesting. Ari has not been played in a long time. Yeah, uh, I at least haven't seen her in a long time. She's been out there every now and then as a nice counter pick, but she never really gets chosen because she doesn't do enough well. She's good at everything, but unlike Jace, she's just average at everything, not very good yeah. at everything. And I think we're going to see a lane swap here. Give oh. Tristana that early, easy game and allow Jace to 2v1. Jace, the best 2v1er in the game. And it is going to be the Ari Cannon going double AP. Wow, that's a lot of CC. Oh yeah, definitely. Jeez, I mean, Kenan most likely up in that top lane there can make really good use of early game harass. So we'll have to see who this uh, top laner is for FX Open. So we'll just have to wait and see for that one. However, uh, this already also being picked up. Just really good at mobility. 
uh, Arya and Kenan have a lot of mobility just with their uh, uh, Arya with their ultimate that has that has that dashes and whatnot. Kenan has his own speed buffs, so we might be seeing you know glit ganks coming out of these out of these two solo laners there. Most definitely, definitely fun to see. Definitely, I think we're going to see a lot of early game Jarvan ganks as both Kenan and Arya synergize so well with the early game Jarvan power. Th land a nice charm or a stun from Kenan, followed up with a knockup from Jarvan, and that's a dead lane. Ooh. Same thing goes with Thresh and Ezreal, as that lane has a lot of killing power. And the final choice would be a Vladimir. Really curious to see what the lanes are going to be like for FX Open, as they have a lot of options, as both Vladimir and Jace can go in the middle or top lane. Same thing with yeah. Tristana and Sona, and I think we're going to see, as I said earlier, I think we're going to see the lane swap. But who do you think is going to go where between Vladimir and Jace? Uh, definitely gonna be feeling this. Um, this J is gonna be going middle. A little bit more reasoning for that, but we had to wait <laughs> for these uh, to to see the uh, summoning spells there. However, um, J is just overall really strong mid laner. He has the speed buff. Is able to get out of ganks and things like that. So just being over in that mid lane, it's it's very easy for him to escape ganks if he if he's able to get those speed buffs coming out from him. Uh, Vladimir at the top lane versus Kennen is gonna be pretty nice. He has a single pool to escape things. We'll have to be careful of the poke, but he should be able to sustain quite enough. And uh, into the three minutes spectator delay, so you can go ahead and take down these summoner spells. Do you see the um, Vladimir running off with the, the ghost and the flash? So that's pretty standard for Vladimir, it's just to have that much mobility there. But it's just a lot more escapes because top lane is a much longer lane than, uh, than mid lane there. So that ghost is really, really necessary to get out of ganks, especially in that. And top lane to be able to run out of that one, so yeah, most likely to be seeing him go up top. Vladimir shouldn't have any real problems if he's against Kennen. I think he's going to have a lot of issues if he's forced to two v one, just due to the fact that two v one lane is very deadly for Vladimir until he hits level two. Even though he should be okay between the pools and the double escape summoners, I don't think he's going to have any real problems. But he's still very vulnerable early on, and he needs that farm. Unlike a lot of other two v one champions where they're usually tanky, they don't need that much farm. But I think we're going to see, as I said earlier, we're thinking we're going to see the 2v1 lanes. We're going to see Ezreal and Thrash up against Vladimir, most likely, just to give Tristana that early farm and make sure that she gets off to a great mid-game where she can hop on top of everyone, scale into late game, and out-carry everyone on the map. Yeah, most of these champions here are pretty much all team fights. A few odd ones out. Um, pretty much both of these teams, those being, um, you know, Ari is a little bit more the assassin champion, same thing a little bit for Jace, however, both of these champions will just be able to, or just both of these teams will be able to provide a lot of damage coming off when it comes into huge team fights. I mean, there's so much AoE CC that comes out of all these guys. Tristana is just going to be able to, you know, stand in the back. If you see the blue Ezreal coming off, uh, you know, having the, the, the kiting protector coming out from him. Yeah, and it's going to be real interesting to see how these team fight go fights go if we actually get to the team fight stage and one team doesn't have a significant advantage. As you have the crescendo into the uh, Arctic prison, I believe, from Sejuani. And on top of all of that, they can throw on Vladimir's ultimate and have Tristana hopping around. That's just a ridiculous amount of team fight power. But on the other side, we've got Kennen, Thresh, and Jarvan who could all just hop on top of each other for a massive AoE wombo combo, and it's going to be really impressive to see who can execute those team fights once they come around to it. Yeah, definitely. So this is the ESL Pro Series uh, match between FX Open and uh, New World Gaming Eclipse. We're getting to these last few se uh, last thirty seconds of the spectator delay, so we will go ahead and throw up a commercial break. Don't go anywhere, guys. All right, and we're back from the break, as we will be hopping into the game in just a moment as the teams are loading up. We'll do a quick skin check, as it seems everybody is running oh, wow. those really awesome skins, with the exception of Tricks on Jace. 
But what do you um, like about these skins? I don't know, man. Jace has like the best two skins, I swear. I'm a little disappointed. Oh well. Yeah, uh, but he looks awesome in all his skins so far. He, yeah, he's just a really also, well. Go ahead. There's also a little bit of color synergy coming off from these guys. Uh, from uh, FX Open. I oh, know. Yeah, from FX Open here. They have a lot of red on the team, except for Johnny. Yeah, on the other side, yeah. it's got a mix of red and blue, so it's pretty much red and blue all around the map. And I think we're going to see a really interesting game here, as both of the teams finally have loaded up. And uh, what do you think we're going to see in terms of level one action? Do you like the? Do you like either one of these teams in a level one fight? Definitely going to be liking uh, New World Gaming Eclipse here for the level one, just because they do have that thrash who has really good early game CC, just able to catch somebody off. They also, you know, have like the exhaust and whatnot to slow people down. So. Could definitely see a potential level one engage or invade coming off from either of these teams, but I guess we'll see as we get on into this game and an instant pause coming up. Probably just have to fix a bit few things and whatnot. Yeah, usually that early game lag. You don't want to start off behind, as these teams love to run out to starting positions. Make sure that they're in position to defend their jungle or invade it should they so choose. And I think we're going to see an invade of some kind because they have a thrash. At least make the opportunity to. Force a summoner spell out if you can. It, there's no real reason not to invade, especially with all those hook champions. And the follow-up CC from Ari and the high damage from Ezreal and Jarvan in that level 1 fight is going to be yeah. pretty devastating. Well, of course, you know, going Charm and Ari might not be the best option. Just want to get into laning phase here. So, uh, just... Hold on, wait. I just realized I didn't have the chat on. No, it's all good. We're actually back in. Yeah, pause okay. is over. There no real go. deal. As we we're saying, likely just a little bit of lag. Wow. And there we go. Have to hit the jump a lot, but... Blades... Go ahead. Doin's Blade start for this cannon here. That's definitely going to be interesting to see. Of course, um, just having that Doin's Blade provides him with so much damage on his harass and whatnot. But we are seeing pings here, which could suggest an invade. We're also seeing... Um, New World game and just grouping up, so we will see what happens. JD we taking the lead. Looks like it might be running into Heaven Time here, putting out the wards. I think Heaven Time spotted out, putting out a few wards on into these brush. Ooh, not gonna really kill that one off. It looks like they will just go with this invade New World uh, game here. Gonna be the just like take control of this blue buff area. It looks like just putting wards and leaving though, so they will have vision of that blue buff. The big thing here is though they were spotted out. out, and they know they were spotted yeah. out. They have that ward there, so they're going to know. So inside of FX Open, they're going to know exactly what's going on, and it looks like they're going to be having Jarvan rotate around and try and catch Sona out as she tries to ward, as it looks like she's in a lot of trouble. But Jarvan's not going to be there in time, and that blue buff will get a free ward. Yeah, so just warding out those blue buffs there, not too surprising to see at all. You know, it's just nice to have that early vision of the jungle. So, looks like we're going to be having uh, this bottom lane for for New World Game to start off with these uh, with these Glooms. And actually, we are seeing this lane swap happening. Yeah, the lane swap is basically there to make sure Tristana gets a very good early game start. If you can get Tristana off to an early level 5 or 6, then push the tower down. She can basically roam around and dominate this mid-game, where most Tristanas usually don't have a good start, just due to the fact they're pitifully weak for those first three levels unless you have a really strong jump on them like a Leona but this is a Sona so they will have a very easy lane up top Kennen should have a decent enough time farming assuming he started properly and he did pick up that shuriken first he got a bunch of extra farm from those wolves as Jarvan is starting on his red buff Sejuani also going to be starting on the red buff up top what do you think about the red buff starts? Definitely going to be um, useful for both these guys, just because they'll have the blue buff for a little bit longer. Um, and they'll just be able to clear it out a lot more. Also, they have really nice early game slow potentials. Especially Jarvan, you know, he has the uh, DQ come his really nice early game dancer. It looks like the blue buff still going to be coming off from both of these guys, actually. As uh, <laughs> Neural Gaming, they, and Neural Gaming and FX Open, they just bring their supports up, and they're going to be stealing away each other's blue buffs. Yeah, right. I'm, they're on I'm the same sure page. I think both teams are aware that this are ha that this was happening. So yeah. just get those steals coming in here. Yeah, it looks like Kennen's under a lot of trouble. Sejuani's going to rotate up top and see if she can get a gank. Kennen is only level one. He really needs level two to get that lightning surge so that he can escape. But he really, but I'm not sure he's going to get it in time for this gank. Yeah, this is a really dangerous gank. Of course, he's going in at a very very low level here. 
So we'll be seeing what happens. He does hit that level 2, does level up that Lightning Rush, so we'll be able to get it. Well, it looks like Kevin Tang going to be going in. Lightning Rush does come out here. Slow's coming off. Pretty and Frost being used, but cannot chase onto Quas there. So we're just having a little bit of a 3 person push up onto this tower. Of course, really just what you want to do when you have a lane swap, really push down onto the towers. Jarvan has come to defend it, a wise decision, as they don't want to give this tower up too early. They need to defend it long enough for their bottom lane to push this tower out. And they're doing a good job. They're also doing an amazing job of denying creeps, as Kennen is sitting at about 10. Vladimir right at the right about the same spot. The problem is the towers are actually heavily in favor of FX Open. The top tower is significantly lower. It's about three to 400 HP, and that's easily a wave of creeps at this point. Yeah, and the thing is for, um, for New World Gaming, oh no, no, for FX Open, their top lane, they have a lot more pull coming out from these guys. Of course, just the Solana really just being the main factor in there. There's so much pull coming out of these guys. Also, Ken starting off with that Dorian's Blade. Didn't have any pots there, so he does have to go back, but just picks up another Dorian's Blade. So going a little bit more of the uh, the long term sustain just with those auto attacks there. But Jarman trying to defend this tower, not too successful as his tower is just really, really low now. Yeah, but both these towers are going to go down incredibly quickly. So it looks like Sejuani's going to go back to base. I thought she might try and rotate down bottom and help Vladimir out. But Vladimir is doing okay. He's actually ahead of Kennen at this point, And he's allowed Sejuani to actually take a lead over Jarvan in terms of farm. As Jarvan's really been stuck up here, but Sejuani's had the opportunity to back up, grab some minions, farm out her jungle, and that advantage is really going to carry over into the mid game with FXO getting that small advantage. Yeah, it looks like Sejuani actually might be rotating Balmain to help out her own sol sol laner. And this is really just, um, we see this a lot in EPSs and like the last rounds of Go Flows where we just see these lane slots coming out. And this is the story the sol laner is trying to hold the tower and the jungle is coming down to help those sol laners hold the towers. Beautiful so move it's... by Thresh on the bottom lane where he rotated up ahead of the tower to spot any oh, incoming yeah. ganks. And he was able to easily detect Sejuani rotating in, so they weren't caught off guard by her jumping over the wall. He's also placed that ward in the brush past the tower, so there's no surprises coming in from Sejuani. And she's going to be basically nullifying this bottom lane, as it's going to be 2v2 lanes in both top and bottom for a long time now. Yeah, just a really passive game coming up from everybody so far here. About six minutes in. Looks like Sona no top under a lot of Oh, yeah. And oh, there's wow, Sona yeah. going down. It looks like Ezreal was hit under the bottom, but Ezreal should be okay as Sejuani is under a lot of trouble in that bottom lane. Yeah, Thresh is taking lots. Er, Thresh is getting right into that Sejuani. Sejuani taking lots of damage. The first blood going off, I believe Jarvan picked that one up. Yeah, lots of like damage just comes out of Jarvan there, so him picking up that first blood hopefully will help him snowball the other lanes out. I don't think he's gone back at yeah, that, so I have quite a bit of gold to spend, but. It, Really going to be nice for, for that Jarvan to get the first blood as well as that can to get in the assist and just give him, you know, a little bit of extra gold in that lane. Biggest thing though is that saves the tower, as that tower was going to go down on one or two creep waves. It costs Kennen his flash and ignite, same thing with a flash on Jarvan, but definitely worth it. You save your tower, you let Kennen get to almost level six, and as soon as he hits level six, I don't think they're going to be able to do a whole lot in this top lane as he could easily pop his ultimate and basically burn out most of the health from either of the top lane champions. And so far that even it's out the lane, as it means we're going to see New World Gaming Ellipse forced to push this bottom lane very quickly instead of losing their top tower and possibly seeing the rotation from that top lane duo. Yeah, so actually it looks like both junglers sort of hovering around this mid lane or the well, instead of and maybe I don't know if Jarvan just want to go and get, take some experience there. He's actually now level 6, so he has that Cataclysm that he can use to dunk out. It looks like he wants to go bottom lane to West Rice with that. The tower is going to be going down out of picking that one up. Looks like JD Wu, what are you doing here? It looks like he just kind of enters in the Dragon family, not sure. However, just, oh no, actually they're going to be starting off with this Dragon. They, Dude, they, I think they, they, saw they saw Sejuani, they saw Sejuani rotating top as Ari saw her out. And with two people top, there's nothing they can do. And this will be New World Gaming Ellipse taking this dragon, unless we see a beautiful steal. But I don't think we're going to see Sejuani steal it. As she's on the side of the map and Kinnon up top in a bit of a fight. Yeah, so that tower is actually going down up at top and the tower is taken by uh, New World Gaming. 
Also, he did have um, Heaven Time actually stealing away that blue buff there, but obviously probably not the best trade. And so that, that Dragon was lost does give um, New World Gaming a little bit of a gold lead there, about like 1,100, so probably not too significant, but he still have that Dragon. Nice extra gold for the team. Do you see Ezreal picking up that tier of the Goddess as well as the BF Sword? So going for that blue build, probably going with the um, with like the Bloodthirster there mixed in. Yeah, he's doing the double lift special on the blue buff build. And I really like that decision as it gives you more late game power. And the early game Bloodthirster with lifesteal makes you so hard to deal with. You can lifesteal an incredible amount of health, especially considering your Mystic Shot and your auto attacks heal you back up. Though, through these dual lanes, it looks like both Kennen and Vladimir are even at about 43 CS, neither one of them getting a whole lot of advantage. Do you have any idea who came out on top, considering they're even overall? Well, I would just say the uh, the team overall for New World Gaming Eclipse just has, already has that advantage because of the um, of that dragon that did happen. Looks like they just they just swapped their lanes into the again, trying to go for these towers. I like the decision to go for towers at this point, as yeah. Kennen is farming pretty well, and it looks like Jace is going to be able to pick up that blue buff and push this mid lane out, as he's been out of mana for a while, and I think Ezreal Thresh pushes push a little faster than Sona and Tristana at the moment, as Vladimir has no tools to deal with that lane, outside of just running away in his pool, and that's not very effective once Thresh hits 6. Looks like New World Gaming might be able to pick up this top tower pretty quickly here, meanwhile bottom lane. A lot of people are circling around. He looks like they're just going to be backing off. The top tower does go down. So now 2-1 to one tower is in favor of New World Gaming. And just uh, FX Open really could not push up against the... Except this cannon here. Looks like Heaven Time is in the brush. Going to be jumping in from GRT. Going on for Quaz here. Nidus is coming in there. Throws out the Crescendo. Heaven Time throwing off his own ultimate. And looks like he should be able to pick up that kill. GRT picking that one up. Lots of CC coming out to pick up that, uh, to pick up Quaz there. Yeah, but definitely worth it considering you picked up a kill, you have this bottom lane completely to yourself, and you're going to be able to control the rest of the map. The only problem is Vladimir might get ganked up top as Thresh is readying his hooks. Yeah, I feel like West Rice though, he'll have a lot of, uh, you know, just getaway potential, of course, with the two defenses, summoner spells, and the sanguine pool. So it looks like he'll be okay for the time being. JD Wu hasn't had too much opportunity uh, after that top lane, really, to, to go out and gank too many lanes here. Yeah, neither one of these mid laners has gotten involved yet, as both Shao and Trix have been stuck in that mid lane, pushing each other very hard. And I'm going to take a quick look at the towers, as both of them are fairly healthy, so neither one of them gained yeah. that much of an advantage, as they're about even on CS at this point. And actually, bottom lane tower gonna be following... The ultimate did come out of Quaza, he was exhausted. JRT using the rocket jump to close some of the distance here. Actually, flashing in, really trying to go for this kill. Quaz slashes away, goes out of Shuriken. Looks like, however, we're gonna be having JD Wu coming up here from the side. It's like, we'll be going on to JRT. Quaz is staying a little bit back, it doesn't want to take too much damage. JD Wu just putting off the EQ combo, one now actually rocket jump coming on into here as Shao comes in there, picks up the kill onto GRT, but Heaven Time is actually here going on for Quaz, picks up the kill onto Quaz, and now JD was really little EQ combo away, double kill coming up for Shao, and actually Quang has come in here, Heaven Time getting hooked, we're gonna be going in for this kill, the box being used as well as the play, huge damage out to Heaven Time, you will be going down, and Huang picking up that kill there. So now 42 in favor of New World Gaming, and really great team play coming out of them. Perfect execution on that team fight. Kennen baited him in as he was incredibly low. He burned off all their summoner spells. And he was able to just force them down long enough so that Ari could rotate in and the rest of the New World Gaming side could just move in there, get secure the kills, and really take their team into a good advantage. As they have a 1,500 gold lead here. And it's only going to be growing from here. As they have the timer on the dragon, they're even on turrets. And I feel like they have a much stronger mid-game team if they can put those ultimates together. Yeah, and of course, Shao picking up the, those kills on Bali and, and greatly increase his gold lead there. Uh, actually about like 300-ish ahead of this Jace there. So looks like Jace going back, picks up that mana moon. Of course, he's just so easily able to get stacks onto that as well as the Brutalizer. Just for huge damage, I can come out of the Jace. Um, 
We have the Bloodthirster finished on this Ezreal here. He actually has not gone for those boots. We do have GRT has actually finished up those Berserker Greaves. Looks like he's going to be going for an Infinity Action himself there. What do you think of the differences between these AD carries builds? The biggest difference is, is how long it takes to get those first few items up. And if Tristana can't get that Infinity Edge up by the next Dragon Fight, it's not going to be very worth it. As the builds with the Tear and Bloodthirster are so incredibly powerful in these mid-game fights, as it looks like we are going to have an engagement over here near Blue. Yeah, a lot of people positioning themselves around this blue. If you have it, it would be a 3v4 if they did get into an engagement. Looks like this blue is going to be going over the trick Z. And he'll be able to get out of there. Two shot barrage comes across. Not really able to hit anybody. Ping's going off onto Heaven Time. But it looks like FX Open is just going to be able to disengage off of that. Yeah, but with that disengage and the fact they see Vladimir top, this is going to be a free dragon. As dragon oh, wow. responds in just a few seconds. And there we go. And it's going to be Thresh and Ezreal doing it up. They have it pink warded, and Sejuani's going to run in. Yeah, it looks like they're going to have five people down here for this dragon. Vladimir is trying to head down. Actually, the ultimate did come out of Sejuani. Wasn't really able to do too much as they are able to secure the dragon. Actually, the cat isn't coming off onto Heaven Time. JD Wu picking up that kill. Nicely done by New World Eclipse there. Now they're chasing off onto this one. Ultimate being used by Quaz. I'm able, able to do too much. Crescendo comes out shouting lots of damage. Has the shield, but does go down to JRT. And now they're going in for the team fight here. JRT has to get over the wall, jumping away from that one. Double kill coming out from rest to white. From rest to white. From west to rice there. Whoops. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, from rest to rice. Trixie going off onto the hunt. However, it looks like Otter should be able to just get out of that one. It's actually going to be a 3 for one, I think. Yeah, three for one, but they lost Dragon. So overall, it's about even in terms of overall gold. New World Gaming just stayed a little bit too long in that fight. And if they were to back up and just not take the fight, take the fact they got a free Dragon and a free kill on Sejuani, they would have been perfectly fine. But they engaged into that little corner where they got hit with all those ultimates, and they lost a turret for it. So now that was a huge win on the side of FX Open. And I like to see what FX Open does from here, as they've taken out all the outer turrets. There's not going to be an objective up for a long time. Where do you think they go next? Oh man, probably just be going for this push for the pushes here. I mean, uh, the tower is still the outer tower mid lane is still alive for FX Open, so they will have to kind of protect that as new game. Probably going to want to push out for that one. Uh, obviously, a Baron's probably not going to be an option here, and. You know, just with these towers down, with all the, a bunch of team fights coming off, they're probably not going to be see too much of the laning phase happening anymore. Yeah, these teams are going to start to rotate around the map incredibly quickly, as they want to make sure that they can get something. As we do have a charm onto Sejuani in the mid lane. Yeah, the flash had to come out there. Really did not want to get caught off once again. Looks like uh, Manarin finished up for. For Otter there, he still has not picked up boots yet. That's just so surprising to me. Still having no boots here 16 minutes into this game. Oh, don't worry. Ezreal doesn't need boots until at least 30 minutes. As he has basically the most mobile yeah. champion in the AD carry role. And it looks like there's going to be a 5v5 fight in this mid lane. Except with the exception of Vladimir being down bottom. Yeah. He doesn't have his summoners to get up there. So he's going to have to start running now or just continue split pushing. Yeah, this looks like West Rice is going to be heading up to the mid lane. Might be running into JD Wu. Actually, they're taking the exact same route, so they will be running into JD. Cookie turns around, but West Rice might find himself a little bit out of position. We'll have to kind of take the long way, it looks like, as he just goes to the river. Yeah, I don't but think he was seen. He was in the brush, so he saw yeah. Jarvan rotating in. There was no way JD Wu saw him. As he didn't check the brush, I don't think he cared as there's no buffs or anything in the area. Most Rice is able to just continue split pushing, catching up on farm, as he's taken a pretty big lead on Kennen at this point. And I'm not sure what Kennen's going to be able to do as he's still really far behind and is building that kind of half AD, half AP build. Yeah, so we just saw um, Trixie actually going up top lane. They really want to push up these lanes, especially if there's going to be a long siege going up onto this mid tower or something like that. Just because... Uh, it really helps to apply pressure when you have a lane pushing when you're getting sieged upon. However, the mid tower goes down. Quas actually picking that one up. So it's 3 to 3 in towers, 5 to 5 in kills. Only differences would be in dragons. Two dragons that were picked up by New World uh, Gaming. So you have a slight bit of a gold lead there. Yeah, and that gold lead is not much. And it's only getting smaller 
just due to the fact the total gold is getting bigger. And this gold lead's been sitting at about a thousand, give or take, for most of the entire game after that first blood fiasco. And it looks like we are going to see both of these teams rotating around, just trying to get farm and not wanting to team fight. They both realize we have a ridiculous amount of team fight in the other team and in ourselves. So these fights can go either way off just a single ultimate. And that's a real big risk, as at this point, both these teams are basically even, and one fight's going to swing this heavily one way or the other. Probably some big differences we're going to be seeing here as, uh, look at these junglers. JD Wu and Jarvan has picked up the uh, the Spear of the Ancient Golem as well as the Age of the Legion. Meanwhile, Heaven Time on Sejuani only has that Spear of the Ancient Golem. It's nowhere near the Age of the Legion. Actually, they have a belt. Like a 1,000 ish gold lead, a little bit more than a thousand gold lead uh, coming out for JD Wu. So he's looking really strong in that sense there. Also, yeah. we see distortion. The big thing here is how it, the big difference here is how much CS difference between Jarvan and Sejuani. Sejuani's oh, yeah. only at 42 CS. Has been involved in most of her team's kills, but Jarvan's been involved in every one of his team's kills, farming more, and just been overall more useful. And I think we're going to see that hap come to play in the next team fight. Is that Aegis is incredibly important, especially considering how much magic damage coming out from both teams. Yeah, so it's really useful to have for his own team, just uh, really increasing a lot of the stats ever. They do kind of have to deal with West Rice, who is down bottom lane, still really split pushing this one out. And uh, he's really just got applying pressure onto New World Gaming as they, they, as they have to really be careful about how far West Rice is pushing up. Big pickup here onto Sona. She has picked up that Oracle's Elixir. Dragon's about a minute or so away, and they're going to look to clear out the entire camp and make sure that they have complete map vision over that dragon so that they can take their first dragon of the game. And it looks like we see New World Gaming not in a position to defend it should the fight happen very soon. But we still have a few seconds on that, and we're going to see if they can get into position in time. Yeah, it looks like that dragon just has respawned. And it doesn't look like they're really going to be able to get there. So, free dragon coming off for FX Open Esports. And, uh, you know, just throwing the, the Zermas and Sin and the Dark Passage over to see that it's gone. So, a dragon finally going to be coming off for X FX Open. Uh, probably going to be really nice for them to just get a little bit more gold there. So, they, they are closing out this goal lead. It's only about 600 now. So, definitely going to be seeing that sway uh, when it comes to the next team fight. And that's going to be really big if they can use that gold to pick up the extra item to equalize something like the Aegis of the Legion or pick up that Runic Bulwark. Tristan is getting really big at this point. She's gone for the Infinity Edge, she has a zeal, and likely going to be picking up a Phantom Dancer before going for that last Whisper. As I don't see a whole lot of armor on the side yeah. of New World Gaming at this point. They've got a little bit coming on both Kennen and Ari from the Zonya's Hourglass, but that's not enough to really warrant the last Whisper just yet. Yeah, of course, just Jace is really like to actually just pick up the uh, the armor pen there. And actually, Heaven Time getting taken down a little bit by JD Wu, just getting there, chugging him down a little bit, as there are five people here for a New World Gaming and FX Open. Just a little bit swept here, as once again, they have West Rice split pushing down bottom lane, but looks like um, they're, they're not going to be able to defend this middle inner tower, and JRT might be walking into a ward here. So will they engage on him? Actually, gets the descendants onto him. They're going to be going over for JRT. He does get the rocket jump, trying to get out of there. Crescendo comes across, and the Cataclysm comes down. I mean, JRT is not JRT is not in it. There is the ultimate coming out from Ken. Triple kill actually coming out for him, and three people go down there, all for Ken in there. Oh man, just the team fight not working that ward, off FX Open. That ward right yeah. here spotted him out, perfectly placed, and that really just ended the fight. They got in that perfect little corner, and it looks and like Wadra's going to die too. And all the going up onto West Rice. West Rice uses his ultimate habit. It's going to be taken down. Quaz picking up that kill. And that's four people down. Quaz with the unofficial Quadra kill right there. As they take down that inhibited tower, and now they're going for the inhibitor. Nice use of the Zonis there to prevent a lot of damage from Jace, as he's really strong at this point. And it looks like we're going to see New World Gaming take down the inhibitor and run as fast as they can. Probably sacrifice this Thresh here, as I don't think he can escape this, but still, taking down two towers, oh. the inhibitor, nice flash. But Man, I don't so think it's going to be enough. Actually, yeah, having time flashing gets him using the flare, but he's slowed down. Trixie picking up that kill. Still, quite a few summoners being burned there. They did see the J the flash being used by that Jace. Same thing coming out for having time, so... 
Yeah, that's that. Can I pick up that Zion's Hourglass? It's going to be so useful when it comes to team fights. Giant Spell and Blasting One also for that cannon. So, Rally's Crystal Scepter coming off soon. But, <coughs> excuse me, for my tankiness and general uh, utility. Yeah, they really needed that fight on the side of New World Gaming. That gave them such a big advantage. They've opened the lead up to about 3,000 gold at this point. And with that inhibitor down, they can start vying for the Baron if they so choose. As someone's always going to have to be in that middle lane, clearing out the creeps. The big advantage for FX Open is pretty much all of their carries can clear creep waves very quickly. As Vladimir, Tristana, and Jace have great wave clear tools. So they can just clear the wave, then move around to objectives, so the lane doesn't get snowballed on. Yeah, so looking over at the rest, I'm shooting Bulwark finished off for that, uh, for JD Wu and Jarvan there, and so, so, so ahead of Heaven Time on Sejuani. Like, she, she's still not close to this Age of the Legion, Aegis of the Legion, and Munich Bulwark already finished up. Thresh has picked up that Oracle's Elixir, so he's going to be sweeping around for all the wards. Pink wards are also being thrown down in the Baron pit. So we're going to see them vie for Baron pretty soon. They see Sejuani in the bottom lane if they want to go for it. She's not the fastest jungler, and it looks like they're going to start on it. Yeah, and looks like they will just go ahead and start on this. They, they have pretty much all the wards around eliminated for FX Open. So New World Gaming probably going to be able to pick this one very easily as... Like, no moves even being made from uh, FX Open to take that one out. So, New World Gaming picks up that Baron there. And uh, they will have that extra gold and that, that great buff for the team fights there. And just really just able to take that one out as a... Like, the I biggest thing for that, for that is <laughs> the waves are all pushing. The extra health from the minions means they're going to stack up in the side lanes. And that allowed them to just rotate in, take Baron while they saw Sejuani down the bottom. And I think FX Owen made the right call by not trying to go for that Baron. As Sejuani was their only real hope of getting something rolling. They need her to land a perfect ultimate on top of a perfect crescendo. And this Sejuani is just too weak at the moment. She has not been involved in enough throughout the map. And it's really hurting them as they need her to be their tanky initiator. But she's not very tanky at this point. She's yeah. very soft compared to Jarvan. Yeah, definitely. And of course Jarvan just being really naturally tanky. Uh, you know, just with the shield, and looks like just lots of grouping coming up. Looks like top lane might be the new focus here for a new world game. Of course, you can't really push on to mid lane when it's already pushed up, so they will be going off on for this top lane inner tower. Maybe poking down just a little bit here as West Rise still not with the team just yet. He was down bottom lane, I believe. He really likes that bottom lane, but this tower is gonna be going down here. And are we gonna be seeing the engage? Looks like Eco Combo actually gonna get. Counted off there, but a great glacial prison. But Ken comes in there. It was actually exhausted, still able to pick up the kill onto the Jace. And now GRT has to get out of there as Sejuani, as well as Sunna, was taken down. Looks like Vladimir gonna be taken down too. Trying to flash after Quasi there, but not going to do it. Two shot brush coming across, not going to be able to land onto Tristana. As another four physio team fight coming off from New World Gaming. Looks like they'll take another inhibitor for this. They can probably take game off this, as it's an easy 20 seconds before anyone important respawns as both Sona and Tejuani burn their ultimates. And this is just the power of that AoE team comp. It has been absolutely devastating by New World Gaming. And I expect to see at least one of those AoE champions banned, as that is really a ridiculous showing, as they are going to be able to push for this Nexus. There's nothing that's stopping them. Vladimir's still 10 seconds away. And Westrice made just a few critical mistakes not being with his team, and New World Gaming capitalized on that perfectly. Wow, so just a uh, 26 minute or almost 27 minute win coming out there from New World Gaming. They just look really, really strong there. So we will be getting this next game starting very, very shortly. Hopefully, at least very, very shortly. But yeah, everyone just stay tuned. We'll be ha this is a best of three, so they will have uh, three games coming, or potentially three games coming up for these guys. So yeah, stay tuned. Thank you for watching Games Cast by Panda Narelle. If you wish to see more, follow my YouTube and Twitch pages below.